Um, uh, hello, everybody. Um, thank you very much for coming. Um, how much fun is this? Is everyone in the cinema? Chris, I take all that. This is an awesome room. Fantastic idea. Screen big enough, is it? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm Richard, uh, Global Business uh, uh, Direct, New Business Director at Specialist Works. We're a media agency um, with our headquarters in London, but with offices all around the world. Um, and I'm, I'm here to talk about uh, something which is probably a little bit different from the rest of the things on the agenda, which is actually how, in the right circumstances, in the, for the right clients, in the right game, using offline media channels, um, can actually be a very, very um, uh, effective way, not only to generate new users, but actually to improve the overall performance of your digital acquisition. Um, so just a little bit about us. Uh, we are a full-service media and creative agency. These are, broadly speaking, uh, our main core channels. Um, uh, my background is in mobile user acquisition, um, uh, and uh, what I've done over the last few years is use uh, my knowledge of the app space uh, and my understanding of the intricacies and unique challenges um, that come with working with apps to try and uh, formulate processes around offline media uh, that make them just a little bit more um, digestible or useful for, for mobile first companies. So about us, um, uh, we are uh, in terms of the, we're an independent media agency. Uh, so just in case uh, you're not that familiar with the media agency scene, vast majority of all advertising in the world is, is bought by um, big global media networks. We are independent. I'm very proud to be so. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about what that actually means. Um, we've just gone past 200 staff globally. Uh, and um, uh, as I say, in terms of the UK, we are uh, the biggest independent agency. Uh, next slide is a video, which I really hope works. It's going to look absolutely brilliant on this screen. Um, which really describes the kind of work that we do and some of the gaming clients that we have. So, fingers crossed. When it comes to TV, at The Specialist Works, it's on like Donkey Kong. Games companies. Broadcasting in 27 countries. We know what's important getting more players and keeping them playing for weeks, months, years. And if you want creative solutions from busting blocks to blockbusters. Check out The Specialist Works. The Specialist Works, where it's game on. That was good. The only problem with that is now my slide's gonna look really boring. <laughs> <laughs> and there we go. So, um, uh, February this year, um, we and the Specialist Works team teamed up with, with Pocket Gamer themselves to, um, to co-sponsor a piece of uh, research that went out to the uh, global mobile gaming market, really to find out people's uh, opinions in the sector uh, about offline. So, um, uh, you may, maybe you saw it, if you're a Pocket Gamer subscriber, I hope you did, uh, it went out in February 2018. Uh, we've got 250 respondents, which is a perfectly healthy um, um, set of respondents or something like this. And the results were interesting, right? So, um, of course, we know and, and we, we, we continue to know that uh, mobile advertising uh, and using offline isn't for everybody. And you have to be at a certain scale, have certain confidence in your products to be able to do that. And of course, the vast majority of people, not only respondents to this survey, but are in this uh, conference as well, often smaller independent publishers for whom you know, offline is uh, going to be something that uh, is probably a little bit out of reach for now. And indeed, 67% of um, respondents work for companies of 50 employees or less. But what was really interesting, even with those companies that uh, responded from smaller companies, is to find out what their opinion was. So um, this next slide basically is, is we asked the question, um, 
Uh, why don't you consider offline channels for your uh, mobile user acquisition? And broadly speaking, these are ranked in terms of uh, the most common uh, um, responses down to the least common. Um, number one, lack of budget, of course, standard uh, and understandable. Uh, then going down to lack of uh, cost or prohibitive, lack of time, resources, etc., etc. So what I what I thought I would do just for, in the short time that I've got here is really to try to um, tackle those kind of uh, most popular reasons or most popular, uh, let's say, misconceptions around uh, offline advertising, in particular TV, uh, and just kind of describe newer, more fresh, and more relevant ways of doing things. So to start with cost. Um, now, of course, moving out of the trackable, uh, optimizable, and very kind of um, reasonably safe environment of mobile user acquisition into something which is that slightly more detached, such as offline, isn't going to be for everyone. Certainly, we would only recommend even trying it once your game has proven its value uh, and you're confident that your game's organic users. Very important point here, we're going to make uh, the money that you need and offline should be considered. Not every advertiser has to have a budget like Machine Zone or King. No. So, what this table shows is um, the specialist works on CV campaigns in. 30 countries, 55 countries, I don't know what the exact number is. And what we've done over the period of time is we've kind of, um, uh, through our experience, drawn up um, ballpark kind of entry level figures. So, GRPs here are a TV term called gross rating quotes. Basically, this is a smallish test campaign that will generate enough in the way of response and generate enough in the way of data for uh, any publisher to kind of get a feel for whether TV is for them. Uh, and of course, these entry level numbers um, uh, vary wildly. So, uh, our second uh, biggest market outside the USA is Canada, and uh, not because necessarily Canada is a phenomenal market for mobile gaming, but it's a really nice toe in the water, as it were, to see whether TV in particular can work for your game. And of course, then um, to go from t uh, TV in Canada into USA is not too big a leap. Um, and we have this pricing out for every major global market, and um, so whether it's Asia, whether it's uh, North America or Europe, uh, like I say, if there's a market that is particularly interesting to you or one that you want to test or trial, we can help you with, um, um, with pricing advice on that. Uh, another huge reason as to why people uh, are reticent to uh, use offline is because they just don't understand how it works. So TV is, is in particular really hasn't changed how it's been planned and bought for 50 years or so. Um, as I said earlier, almost all the world's TV is bought by these huge media agency networks um, and they all have huge deals with broadcasters in whichever country they're in whereby they get massive kickbacks depending on how much money they have spent with them over a period of time uh, and actually when you're just all about brand, when you're all about reach and frequency, just getting your TV ad out to as many people as often as possible actually it doesn't really affect you too much because as long as your ad is on the most popular channels at the most popular times then you'll do what you need to do. This isn't really the model that anybody here was prescribed to though. And often it's a system that works against the advertiser. What I mean by that is when these deals are in place and a media network spends a lot of money with a TV broadcaster in order to activate that kickback, the media agency benefits because they get the um, kickback or rebate, obviously the TV station benefits but the advertiser doesn't. Um, However, this is beginning to change. So, there are independent agencies around the world, and we are one of them that don't have any of these rebates or kickbacks, and are able to make choices based on suitability and make choices based on relevance uh, in terms of TV uh, buying that suit the um, client and not suit the agency themselves. Uh, there's a flexibility there and the ability to do things differently, which is why uh, on the video that we saw earlier, we've been able to bring so many of these mobile first and some of the most you know, uh, data reliant and some of the most kind of performance focused mobile games companies in the world we've been able to open up new markets and new audiences to them by doing this in this slightly different way no share deals no process to hit working entirely for clients benefit third most popular reason and again one that we hear all the time and, and as a ex-mobile ua person i completely understand this is it's not possible to track the effects of offline campaigns now, of course, we can't use last click um, attribution uh, and we can't marry up um, installs back to uh, exact data sources because of the nature of offline. Um, uh, and it's uh, tri tracking a mobile response from offline triggers is, of course, hard to do. Uh, and a combination of, of how mobile attribution and TV buying both work is where. So, in terms of media agencies, 
having a, a solution or, or a, a combination of both mobile UA knowledge and also knowledge of, of how the TV market works is not something that you find uh, in many places. Um, trying to match installs back to TV spots is inaccurate, um, but there are ways of doing it. Uh, our, our method of data analysis is called uh, Cochisim, and what it does is it uses several methods to set a robust pre-TV pre kind of baseline, uh, and then measure um, using a variety of, of, of methods uh, how that baseline kind of works. So um, I'm going to kind of very quickly uh, show you one of the methods that we use. Uh, this is what we call the country method, uh, and this relates particularly to a uh, TV campaign uh, that we run in Canada. As I said earlier, we do a lot of Canadian stuff. So the Canadian, is, this is organic installs only. That, that red line is the number of Canadian organic installs that our game had on a daily basis. The light blue line is the number of organic installs uh, that our game had in the United States on a daily basis. The numbers down the left hand axis are the real numbers in terms of US organic, and the numbers down the right are the real numbers in terms of Canadian organic. So you can see the ratios are, 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 are out, yeah? The US is getting kind of between 20 and 25,000 installs a day, whereas Canada is getting between 8 and 11,000 a day. But what you do see, which is really interesting, is on a day-to-day -day basis, the patterns kind of track reasonably consistently between the US and Canada. So what that means is when our TV campaign went live in Canada, which is identified by that big blue arrow there, we were able, and there was no TV in the US at this period in time, so we were able to see what the effect of TV had on the Canadian organic installs in relation to the US where there wasn't TV. Now, the reason that this method became really useful was because, unbeknown to us, and I think unbeknown to the client, the game was featured in both the US and the Canadian app store all of a sudden. So what that meant was that there was a huge spike in organic installs in both app stores, both the American app store and the Canadian one. So all that third line, that kind of slightly darker blue line, what that um, indicates was how our baseline, which had been tracked and had been worked out for all of that period of time going up to the start of the TV campaign, it was able to predict what the effect of the TV would have been if the featuring hadn't have happened. So if we hadn't have done this, it would have been really easy for us to take all of that spike in terms of organic installs and response and attribute it back to TV, because that's what it looked like. It looked like TV had really kicked it up. But because we knew that the American installs had also had that spike, but without the TV, we were able to factor that in. I hope that's quite clear. That's, that's our country's method. As I say, we have various other methods as well. Now the next video is... Uh, we're playing in 50 countries on TV and we track everything that we do. So we're very careful about what we do. But, but again, it's limited data, so how can you track what the that limited. of the it's not that, it's, it's, it's not that limited. Be there's one, the biggest thing that you see out of television is that it creates a halo effect. We, we, we buy more than what you see on the impressions and what you get from the Super Bowl every day, okay? And, uh, but before you go on TV, you're not a brand. There is social power. You sound, like, you sound like a traditional media. There is social power to it, but the value of what you get out of it is only really captured in digital. This is what we've learned. So if you buy television, there is a effect on digital marketing, meaning that you can measure the click-through rates, your prices do go down when you buy on television. But if you were to buy just on television, you would probably go out of business. I don't know who that guy is or was. Anyone seen that video clip before? So that's the CEO of Machine Zone, um, obviously one of the uh, uh, biggest um, uh, users of TV, certainly in the past, uh, in the world. And what he's talking about is a really interesting thing, and it's something that we talk about with our clients all the time, which is actually if you only focus uh, on the uplifting organic installs in terms of trying to get ROI or to judge the success of your TV campaign, you're kind of missing the biggest thing. And as uh, Gabe just said there, he doesn't go on TV and spend all that money on machine zone brands just to generate new organic installs that you wouldn't get elsewhere. He does it because he knows it will have a knock-on effect on his digital and mobile user acquisition. And of course, when you get to that kind of scale, in terms of mobile user acquisition, you, you need all the help you can get. 
So it's why is measuring more than just organic installs important? So, of course, the subject has been talked about in many different rooms already today, ad fraud. So, for me, certainly in my experience, the most common um, uh, manifestation of ad fraud is click injection of false attribution. So, networks or publishers deliberately or inadvertently, if it's a network, claiming uh, organic installs as paid for. If you're only looking at the organic pool in order to judge the success of your TV campaign, that organic pool realistically is probably smaller than it actually should be because of the fact that a lot of these are being misattributed. You have to look, if you want to do TV, you want to really see the, the full benefit of it, you have to look past just organic install of it. And of course, the second one is the importance of reactivation. So, for games of scale, such as machine zone game, uh, games, um, uh, Reactivation is more important than acquisition. So we work with both Pokemon and we do some little bit of stuff with King as well. And certainly for their Pokemon Go and for their Candy Crush, their legacy Candy Crush games, they use TV purely to reactivate people who are gone dormant. Um, people who are casual players, maybe aren't in and around the mobile kind of channels all the time, maybe don't see the reactivation uh, ads that, that the mobile UA team are putting out. So that kind of thing, for these kind of mainstream games, TV is a phenomenal thing. And of course the final one is improved digital and mobile results. As Gabe was just saying, these are some of the things that often you do see as a positive um, halo effect of TV. Better CPIs, better click-through rates, increased LTV, um, etc. Okay, so nearly at the end. One um, study that was done by uh, Facebook, so it could be a case of marking your own homework here, was about how um, ad recall and purchase intent um, are mutually beneficial when it comes to Facebook and TV running in tandem. Uh, and this study that they did uh, for a US brand um, called uh, uh, it's a, it's a US Household Goods Brand. And what it showed was actually by running TV and Facebook at the same time, it was a case of one plus one equal, equaling three. Um, of course, over and above just running them side by side, you can look at ad syncing, you can look at tailoring the delivery of your um, ad copy or your ad impressions around your TV performance. You can look at, uh, uh, if, if web or PPC is a thing for you, you can look at synchronizing your um, PPC campaign as well. Um, and another one, of course, another popular subject here is influencers. Uh, and certainly we've been working with clients recently for whom the effect of TV and the effect of influencers kind of blur to such a degree that we look at the money that's gone into the influencer campaigns and TV campaigns as one kind of pop, and then look at any kind of uplift that comes from that, again, as a combined effort, rather than looking at them in single silos. Okay, so to summarize, um, TV isn't the untrackable and flexible money pit that it used to be. Uh, for those com companies considering TV, it's very, really important to look and think beyond just the organic installs, although you can play your cards right they come as well. Um, and as well as the brand element, there are other many positive effects in and around your digital acquisition. The key is to find an agency partner that understands the mobile gaming world on both sides of it. And as with everything in terms of uh, marketing, it's knowing what you want to get out of the TV campaign, knowing what your own goals are and what success would look like, that enables you to accurately judge whether it's worth you or not, and whether it's a channel you can use in the future. Thanks for listening.